Well, good and thank y'all for always watching and staying tuned in to the Also Live channel. And now that you're finally here, now that y'all really done clicked on this video, y'all really done walked into these great vibes. And those that know and those that really function with me on the monthly, weekly, daily, hourly, yeah, those that function with me, they already know that my vibe really attracts my tribe. And those that's rocking with me, y'all know how we gonna ride, how we gonna slide, point blank, peer, we pulling up, popping out, and no, we don't got nothing to talk about. That way, that part, I am also legit, I am also authentic, and I'm also outspoken for this little YouTube thing. Don't y'all know we connected just like Wi-Fi? That data connection is strong. So if you really function with me, function with me. I not only attract love, I am love. Might I add, I am also prolific. Hey, thought y'all might need to hear that because, yeah, y'all kind of really needed to hear that. I not only attract love, I am love. I aspire to inspire before I expire. And today's topic and discussion really is a discussion that I feel it's going to touch a lot of, you know what I'm saying, people's heartstrings. Mostly my melanated individual men. Hopefully it do. If it don't, then you really can't relate. But if it do, this meant for you. We finna definitely get right. I'm finna help y'all understand, and Malcolm finna help y'all really understand the difference between the house Negro and the field Negro. Now, I decided to do the cartoon version because I felt as though that kind of would get stuck in your head for some reason to me a little bit more than just seeing Malcolm at a podium. For some people, seeing Malcolm at a podium would definitely get stuck in their head as it did for me. But I think for certain individuals, the cartoon version might be a little, it might work a little better. So here's something and I hope that y'all enjoy it. And I'm going to definitely save my thoughts and commentary for parts of the video while, while watching it and parts after. So yeah, let's get to it. There was two kinds of slaves. Two. There was the house Negro and the field Negro. House the house Negro. Negro, they lived in the house with master. With they master. dressed pretty good. They ate good because they ate his food. But he left. What he left. <laughs> they lived in the attic or the basement, but still they lived near their master. And they loved their master more than the master loved. <laughs> that man loved his master more than he loved himself. I think this is something that y'all really need to pay attention to. We're going to speak more into depth, but pay attention to it. themselves. They would, they would give their life to save the master's house quicker than the master would. The house Negro, if the master said, we got a good house here, the house Negro say, yeah, we got a good house here. He say, yeah, we got a good house. As, like, as though he paying rent or something. He feels so comfortable being a house Negro that... He had excluded his real identification to him to himself, to his reality. And he has took taken on the life and role of a house Negro or a robot. Whenever the master said we, he said we. we. That's how you can tell a house Negro. That's how I can tell. <laughs> if the masters if the Tell me why he do just look like uh Samuel Jackson from Django. Master's house caught on fire. The house Negro would fight harder to put the blaze out than the master would. He fight hard to put if that blaze out. If the master got sick, the house Negro would say, "What's the matter, boss? We sick. We, we sick. <laughs> we sick. What's wrong with you, boss? We sick. <laughs> Get it though." His master. He identified himself with his master more than his master identified with himself. And if you came to the house Negro and said, let's run away. He said, let's run away. I want y'all to take one good look at the house Negro and the field Negro. Which you can tell which one has been put through the struggle, has been put through trials and tribulations. And you can also tell who is the 
hypnotized, comfortable one in the house Negro. Let's escape. Let's separate. That house Negro would look at you and say, man, you crazy. Man, you crazy. What do you mean separate? What you mean separate? Where is a better house than this? Where can I wear? Where do you see a better house than this? That house Negro so confused, he think that white man house he is. He say, well, you see a better house than this. They feed me here. They clothe me here. They treat me as one of their own here. So where do you see a better house? <laughs> Thoughts of a house Negro. Better clothes than this. Where can I eat better food than this? That was that house Negro. That the house In Negro. those days, he was called a house nigger. Hey. And that's what we call him today because we still got some house niggas running around here. We do. Here. We got some house niggas out here. We do. We do. Hey. <laughs> hey, look. Hey, y'all, look who we put. Guess who this is right here. I ain't got to say much. Just look at the ears. You know who this is. This your favorite president right here. You feel me? Like, I like I like that cartoon part, how he, added, how he did this part right here. That's a real house Negro right there for you. Literally. If he, yeah. <laughs> He gonna mosey on down. This modern house Negro. The modern day. He, he loves his master. He He's trying to live right next to him. As much as the house is worth just to live near his master. And then brag about I'm the only Negro out here. <laughs> and then he gonna go brag about I'm the only Negro out here when I didn't gave my life savings just to come stay next to these people who don't even want me next to them. Like, that's the modern day house Negro. Listen to him. I'm the only one on my job. I'm the only one in this school. You nothing but. He the only one at his job at a job that he thinks really care about him in any sort of way. That job laugh at him and they think that y'all see. I ain't gotta do too much. Pictures explain more than words could ever explain. Take heed into this. A house Negro. <laughs> And if someone come to you right now and say, let's separate, you say the same thing that the house Negro. Look, does this not look actual factual to our modern day house Negroes? They say, uh, you give me Jordans. You give me, you give me jewelry. You give me likes on Instagram and Facebook. What other place better than this? Deep. I'm not. We're gonna listen. I ain't gonna say it's it on the plantation. <laughs> what you mean, separate from he America? Don't want us from America? This good white man. This good white man. He giving us food stamps. He giving us stimulus checks. He giving us Jordans and cell phones. And you want us to separate? That's the modern day house Negro. Where you gonna get a better job than you get here? Where you gonna get a better job than you get here? That's what the house Negro saying. I mean, this is what you say. I, I ain't left nothing in Africa. That's what you say. Why you left your mind in Africa. You left your damn mind in Africa. You left your heart, your soul in Africa. Your spirit is in Africa. You left your sense of understanding in Africa. Because this right here is not your home. Listen to him. I like this right here. The person that created this, prop to you. Now we finna get introduced to the field Negro. On that same plantation, there was the field Negro. There was the field Negro. The field Negro, those were the masses. That was the masses. You know, we was the warriors. You know, we was the one that was beaten. Brutally. We was the one that was shackled and tortured and we was the ones there was always more negroes in the field than there was negroes in the house that's right the negro in the field caught hell he caught hell he ate leftovers he caught hell he ate leftovers hmm. 
and the house they ate high up on the hall. The Negro in the field didn't get nothing but what was left of the insides of the hall. He got what was left of the insides of the hall. See, if you was a house Negro, you kind of got to eat really semi-good. Not as good as your master, but kind of close. The field Negro got what was left. The guts. The chillings. The pig's feet. Pig's tail. Pig ass. They got all of it. Call them chitlins nowadays. That's what they call them nowadays. In those days, they call them what they were. Guts. Guts. That's what you were, a gut eater. A gut eater. And some of That's what they thought of you. Gut eaters. And some of y'all really still are. Speak the truth. Speak the truth. Speak the truth. The field Negro was beaten from morning till night. From morning till night. In a shack, in a hut. He wore cast off clothes. He lived in a shack. He lived in a hut. He wore cast off clothes. None of his stuff was designer. None of his stuff was the new Balenciaga. None of his stuff was the Nor Dior. None of his stuff was none of that. He was just grateful to have clothes. Point blank pig. He hated his master. And he hated I his master. I say he hated his master. He hated that man he so much, he was intelligent. That house Negro loved his master. That house that Negro. Negro, remember, they were in the majority. He remember, we remember that we were in the majority. Hated his master. And they hated his master. When the house caught on fire, he didn't. The house caught on fire. That field Negro prayed for a wind. He wanted to. He wanted to pray for a way. Hey, come on, come through here, blow this house down, please. That's that's the field Negro. Or a breeze. <laughs> or a breeze. And what's so funny right here? Not only is the house being destroyed and everything is going crazy, but that house Negro is. Being put through the same situation because he had to consider himself something or someone that he wasn't. When the master got sick, the field Negro prayed that he died. He prayed that he died. <laughs> if someone come to the field Negro and said, let's separate, let's run. He didn't say, where are we going? He said, any place is better than him. Any place is better than him. Any place is better than here. Now, this video right here, I kind of just wanted to just bring it to people's view. I really just wanted to just get y'all to see this. Mostly for my melanated black men. You know, melanated black, same thing. The Kings and I thought about this video because for so long I've been feeling like an outcast to society and it's been so frustrating because I couldn't figure out why and what was causing me to feel like such an outsider was it because America was founded on white supremacy was it because I was born a I was born a crime. Was it? What was it? So I got to thinking and I got to ponder and I then I just happened to just remember something that I had remember seeing way back when Malcolm X speaking of the field Negro and the house Negro, and that's when it clicked in my head. This is what makes you different. Because not only are you not willing to fall in line as a puppet, you're willing to die for what you believe in. And then I got to thinking to myself, well, which one would I be? You know, would I be a house Negro? Would I be a field Negro? And as I was sitting here just pondering on the situation, 
I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely the field Negro. Because this materialistic, these materialistic things don't make me. As you did here, the field Negro, he got beaten the most. Before George Floyd even, quote unquote, got his knee to the neck, it had already happened to me and I didn't see it on the news. No one heard about it, but I felt the pain from it. I still remember those police officers putting their boots on my neck and telling me if I move that he will break my neck. I got to thinking, well, damn, as a house Negro, I never really felt as though I live as good as the white folk. I never really felt that way. I always felt closer to the field Negro. We really never had things much. My mama tried to, you know, she she did an awesome job at getting us everything that she, we needed. But as far as what we wanted, you know, sometimes you can't always get what you want. As long as you got what you need, you're good. So in a sense, I felt as though I was the field Negro. I didn't need this to make me ha to make me feel better and make me think that, oh, I'm worth something now. Because I knew it when I was in the field. Slave from job to job. Trying to understand myself as a black man in this world. We was brought here in 1619. First time slaves were brought here. And ever since then, this has been a place to have yet actually grown, been able to grow to this full potential with the coming of us coming over here, if not already being here because we were kind of already really here. But that's a different story. And I just, I don't know why I was feeling that way. So it got me back to what I'm saying, not to get off track, but back to what I'm saying. I felt as though, why am I so frustrated? Why, why do I walk out my house and feel some type of way? Why do I not feel as though I'm as powerful as I am? I know I am very superior, not the inferior. I know I only offer the humble hand and not the iron fist. So why do I get the end of the stick why do I get the guts of life is it because I am a field negro is it because I have a conscience of my own because I'm able to understand on my own help me understand I ask myself these questions this is slavery in America we have been enslaved we have been genetically diagnosed with the mentality of post Traumatic slave disorder. We, me, you, melanated individuals, we suffer from that and yet have yet to try to even fix the situation. Instead, we just feed it. We just feed it. And we wonder why we going crazy. We wonder why people losing their damn mind. It's because we have yet to understand and find our true self because we're so busy caught up trying to be the house Negro. So caught up trying to be light. So caught up trying to be in the mix. And I only say, I really only say that because What we choose to remember speaks volumes, right? So if you choose to remember what these people done, if you, done to you, to your ancestors, it'll make you want to make a difference, be the difference. But if you refuse to want to understand and come into real life 
I feel like you will continue to be a sheep. And not only will you be continue to be a, become a sheep, you will be eaten by the wolf. There is 1% of the world that wants to control the world, right? And they say that's 5% of the world that knows about the world being about the 1% trying to control the world, right? And then they say there's 90% of the world that sleep and have no understanding of what's really going on. And if only the 90% could just really wake up in a sense, we can defeat any demonic entity there is, anything that's not righteous, anything that's not or does not bring harmony nor peace. You feel me? Like, And it just got me thinking because I just be sitting here, y'all, like, and I was scrolling through my Twitter and what really had me just, just drew me to this is because as I was scrolling, right, they had a picture of Lil Nas X and they had it of him with woman parts. And that just threw me off to the max. It just threw me off to the max because the world is changing. This is the agenda that they want. We so damn ready to not own up to who we are that we are really willing to sacrifice everything we love just to get the notoriety from people who don't love us. These agendas are real. If we don't come to terms with who we really are, there will be no way of coming back. People say, oh, do you celebrate Black History Month? Why would I celebrate Black History Month when I am black and every day I make history? So wouldn't that make Black History Month every day for me. The day my neck almost got broken. The day I had guns drawn on me. The day I got pulled over riding on my bicycle. I made history. I'm still living. So there is no Black History Month. Don't put us in no, no. This is every day that I live is my history from being black. My history. His story. And I know I'm kind of like all over the place, but it's just because I got so much to say. But I feel like y'all really need to hear this. Before I go, let me let y'all know. Shout out Malcolm X. He said something. And I highlighted it and I wanted to just expound on it. Even though we might be with them, we weren't considered of them. Even though we were with them, we weren't considered of them. Even though we live in America together, it doesn't mean that they really want us here. Since I felt as though that I was tired, I was just tired. And not physically, but just drained from being black. Then, out of nowhere, my instinct spoke to me, and my intuition and my heart spoke to me, and I have been re-energized, because I know who I am, and if I ever feel as though that I don't know who I am, I have to just take one look in the mirror to understand that I am who I am and who I am not, I never pretend to be. I am a melanated individual. I am a God. I am a Pharaoh. I am 
the most highest form of frequency that you will ever come in contact with. I am an aura that's so bright that it it's hard to even focus on. People think that, oh, black people, we just always been down and out. No, we've reached our golden age. We've we've had our golden age. We've we actually tried to build finance and become better and grow in life and every single time we try to become something great, we get tore down again. I know y'all remember what happened to the Greenwood neighborhood or AKA Black Wall Street. Roughly 300 people died. 1,200 people lost their homes. All because the ego and the abuse of power that certain individuals thought they had over us and they did in a sense because we were tricked we were fooled we were taught under their guidelines under their teachings we never ever thought to actually write a book of our own or do our own research so in the midst of all that we became an unidentified person. And I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't come to I couldn't come to the thought of knowing that I don't know who I am and I don't know how much power that I have. So I am now here saying that now transformed into something way much greater than I once was yesterday. And this transformation is going to be powerful. And now I understand why certain individuals try their hardest for melanated individuals to stay at a certain frequency. It's because once we start really finding ourselves and really gaining our superpowers, literally, it's a sense of comfortness. It's a sense of peace. And that's something that they really can't control. So that kind of breaks them in a way. So like, I'm at peace. And now I'm really turn up and each one teach one. My vibe attracts my tribe. Life challenges aren't stumbling blocks. They're building blocks of faith. So I know under the rest, I do not rise to my expectations, but only fall to my level of training. That means that I have to train a little bit more harder. Knowledge don't become wisdom until we apply what we learn. And I applied what I've learned and continue to learn. Therefore, I will become much more than greatness. The biggest part of me is non-physical. You will never see it, but you will feel me though. You will feel me though. I will not just sit here and let my people continue to be beaten and enslaved. I will be the voice and speak even if my voice shakes. And with that being said, I'm gonna speak loud even if my voice shakes. I'm gonna do more than exist on a daily. And I appreciate those that really function with me because if you function with me, I function with you. And with that being said, sometimes the smallest little things in life could take up the biggest part of your heart. And the smallest thing for me is just wanting to make the smaller different and being the change in the world. And for those that don't know, to exist is to change. To change is to mature. To mature is to create oneself endlessly. So understand that be yourself because those that mind don't matter and those that matter don't mind who you are. 
I appreciate y'all. I ain't really want to do too much. I got a lot of thoughts. I know I kind of uh, bought up that little Nas X thing. I really want to talk a little bit more about that, but I need to see if this can get at least 50 likes, and then I'll do my, you know, I'll drop a video for y'all because that's really something I kind of feel as though I got to speak on because it's something that's really not only hurting one individual, it hurts the race of that individual in a sense. So let's not continue to lead with foolish acts and let's lead with acts of righteousness. Let's stand strong like a kickstand. You feel me? We're going to stay connected. We're going to stay, you know what I'm saying? We're going to stay in a sense of great vibes only, good vibes only. And remember, your personality determines your personal reality. The person you are determines your reality. And your reality comes from within, not the actuality of life, the act of life, but the real part that comes from within. So I ain't gonna do too much. Speak the life you want into existence. Go out there and be great. Go out there and hit, you know what I'm saying? Every goal that you plan on hitting because you can achieve it, you can prevail, and you can do it. I told you so, and I'm big also, so you know what I say is for show. My word is my bond, and I ain't really got to do too much. That way, that part. The law of vibration is primary over the law of attraction, so speak the life you want into existence. We're going we gonna to save America together because America is in slavery. It's upon you to break them shackles. And if you need a little help, I got you. We're going we gonna to do it. And with that being said, I ain't really got too much to say. I appreciate y'all. I'm out, little bitty, bitty, bitty. Gang!